Well, good morning. It's uh, good to be here this morning. I certainly appreciate Brother David Guthrie uh, uh, inviting me to come speak this morning at uh, His Word Lives Ministry. I uh, thank you for the opportunity anytime to stand and preach the Gospels of Jesus Christ. I'm, uh, this morning I'm going to be preaching out of the book of Acts chapter 3. I'm going to be talking to you today about some things that Christians seem to have forgotten. I'm going to talk to you today about things that we just don't carry for daily in our lives anymore. We, we seem to have a tendency to want to watch the news and we want to take things that are on the news at face value, that the world is crumbling, the world is crashing. Well, if we'd read the Word of God, we'd know what's happening. But you know, today there are so many things that Christians fail to realize and to do. And this book, chapter 3 in the book of Acts, gives us a good example of that. Today, there's so many times today that we just falter and fail when it comes to the power of God. I'd like to read these verses of scripture to you this morning. It's in the book of Acts chapter 3. It says, Now Peter and John went up together and into the temple at the hour and prayer at the ninth hour. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us, and gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, I give thee, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel you at this? Or why look ye so earnestly on us? as though by our own power or holiness made this man to walk. The God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob and the God of our fathers hath glorified his son Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and desired a murderer to be granted unto you, and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, wherefore we are witness. And his name through faith in the name hath made the man strong, whom you see and know ye, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. Father, we thank you this morning, God, for this opportunity to stand. We thank you, God, for these words, for this healing, God. We thank you for this just to show this world, Father, that you still hold that healing power, that you still hold the power to change the things that are happening in our world today, that you still, Lord Jesus, give us that power. We still today, Father, we thank you and we praise you for all you've done and all you will do. God, I pray that you just touch hearts and minds and open our eyes, Father, through these words. It's in Jesus' wonderful name and we ask these blessings. Amen and amen. amen. Peter and John, as Jesus himself did, they went up to the temple to pray. Just as we go to church today, they still went to the temple Yes, Jesus and his disciples, they preached wherever they might be, wherever a crowd would gather, Jesus would preach the word. And so does his disciples, as we should today. 
We should still be doing this today. We should be going out to the people because a lot of the lost people are not going to come to the to the temples. They're not going to come to our churches, but we need to go out and reach them. But they were going up to the temple this morning. They were going to go and pray about the ninth hour. They were having their prayer there, so they were going to join. There might have been an opportunity for them to speak to somebody about Jesus, even though they were in the temple where there were so many sometimes hated and pushed away. Father, but this morning, we thank you that Peter and John were willing to go. And it said, the Bible tells us in verse 2 there, it says, there was a man laying at the gate called Beautiful. He was born lame from his mother's womb. He was brought there every day and laid there that he might beg of people that they would help him and give him food or money or whatever he stood in need of at that time. He had no means of support. He couldn't get up and get a job and support himself. He couldn't work in the fields. He didn't have a trade. He was lame, lame from birth, the Bible tells him, from his mother's womb. When he hit the, this earth, he was born lame. Peter and John going into the temple that morning. As always, I'm sure he did. He saw people pass by and he begged of them to help him, to help support him. Because in those days, they didn't have welfare. They didn't have means of getting support from the government. The government didn't care about supporting people. It wasn't their job, they figured. So he was there at the gate called Beautiful, just begging. He was putting his life in his family's hands, that they would support him and feed him and take care of his needs. But his family obviously was poor and they couldn't do it all. So they put him at the gate called Beautiful. One of the gates where most of the people would go into the temple and he would see the most people and be able to ask of them for help. Well, that morning he was sitting there and Peter and John came by. He begged them for an alms. He just asked them. Well, Peter, the Bible says, he fast, He looked at him and fastened his eyes. Then Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, look on us. They wanted him to look at him. They wanted him to really pay attention. Because, you know, he could have been sitting there begging as they come by, had his hand out begging them for alms, but looking around at the crowd, wanting to see who else might be coming by that he might get something from. But what Peter was going to give him, he wanted him to look at him. He wanted him to know that he was serious about what he was doing. And said so Peter and John fastened their eyes upon him, and they they just demanded him to look upon them. And says, and he he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Well, little did he know what he was going to receive. Well, Peter and John told him, said, we don't have silver, we don't have gold, but what we do have, we're willing to give to you. They had that Holy Spirit that had come to them in that upper room. The Bible tells us that it came like cloven tongues on fire and set upon their shoulders and that mighty rush of wind blew through. That Holy Spirit came and dwelled in them right then. That Holy Spirit filled them that they could be sent out among people that they would be sent out to do the works that Jesus Christ had had here on this earth. The works that he did, they were here to continue it. You know, if you look back in your Bibles, in the book of uh, uh, Ma, uh, Luke chapter 10, there's just a few things here I'd like to read. Jesus told his disciples, he said, I send you out. Therefore said he unto them, the harvest is truly great. He's, Jesus is telling his disciples, there's plenty of work out here for us to be doing. There's all kind of sinners here in this world. Well, you know, there still is today. We still have people in need of salvation. And unless we get out here and preach the word and teach the word and tell people about it, how are they going to know? You can't depend on them that they'll have, see it on TV. You can't depend on them that they're going to get on their computer and be looking up Jesus Christ and his ministries to get that they might come to know him and give their life to him. You can't depend on that. We need to go out here and be telling people about it. And that's what Jesus sent them to do. And then in the same chapter in Luke 9 and 10, he says, uh, 
Go ye your ways. Behold, I seen you forth as lamb among wolves. Well, you know, today he's still sending us out. He's sending me. He's sending David. He's sending anybody who will stand upon the promises of God. Stand upon those promises he made us. He's, those fields are still white. He's still looking to reach people through us. Just as he did the disciples that came out of that upper room filled with the Holy Ghost of God. You know, today, that's one of the problems we have in America. We're not filled with the Spirit of God anymore. We're too busy thinking about the things of the world, too busy trying to do and accomplish things here on this earth that really don't matter. What really should matter to us as Christians is this lost and dying world. People dying and people going to hell because they don't know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Well, Peter and John, they were faithful. They were willing to go. They were willing to spread the word. And this young man sitting there at the gate called Beautiful, begging those alms, they fastened their eyes upon him and told him to look upon us. And the Bible in verse 16 says, Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Well, you know, I might go to Fairmount, Georgia today. I might stand there on the sidewalk. I could stand there and preach the gospel. But if I really wasn't enthusiastic about it, if I really didn't have that feeling of the Holy Spirit, it wouldn't mean anything. Church, we need to get filled with that Holy Ghost of God. We need to go out to the streets and take this word, just like Peter and John did with this lame man. They told him to rise up and walk. The Bible says he got up right then. He reached down his hand, Peter did, in his right hand and lifted him up and said immediately his ankle bones were strengthened. Immediately he stood up and walked. It wasn't a long-term thing. He didn't have to go through physical therapy. He had the only physical therapy he needed. He had Jesus Christ in his life right then. He was redeemed. He was healed. The Bible tells us that it wasn't anything slow about this healing. It was there. It was automatic. And in verse 7, he said, and they took him by the hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. In verse 8, said, he leaping up, stood and walked and entered into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And it says all the people saw him. All the people that had been in this town that knew him maybe from birth, knew that he was lame, knew that he was sitting there begging and asking alms of people for his support and to help with his food and his care and his clothing because he had no means of support other than begging. All these people that saw him and knew him. Can you imagine? Hey, is that not the lame man who was sitting at the gate beautiful? Moments ago when we came in, was that not the man who was standing there begging for somebody to help him, to give him what he stood in need of? Had to be a lot of wonder in their mind. What's happened? What in the world has happened here? This man is up, leaping and walking and praising God, it said. He was praising God for what he had done in his life. Well, you know, today... There's so many times we cry out to God in prayer. There's so many needs we have, but it just seems like we don't put feet on those prayers. It just seems like we pray that prayer and we get up onto our feet and we walk off and we really are not sure that our prayer reached heaven. Well, let me tell you something. If you cry out to God, he hears every cry. He hears everything that you ask for. No, he might not bring you that Cadillac. He might not bring you that bag of cats. But he can bring you salvation. He can bring you what you most importantly stand in need of. When you've got troubles and trials in your life and you turn to God and you just pour out your heart to him and you just turn it over to him, that's when you'll see things change. That's when you'll see a difference in your life. Let me tell you, this lame man had been sitting there. The Bible didn't say how old he was. Didn't tell me how many years he had sat there begging. But let me tell you, whether it be six months or 20 years, 
when Jesus Christ came into his life, when that Holy Spirit filled me and reached down and prayed for him and gave him what they had, the Spirit of God, that Spirit that entered into him that day and made him whole. You know, he's really waiting to make us all whole. You know, if you've never knelt and asked Jesus Christ into your life, you have no idea what I'm talking about here today. You don't have any idea about that feeling. Because let me tell you, when he lifted up me up from that world of sin, I know how this man felt. I was leaping and praising God myself. You know, that's the way it ought to be. Too many times today, though, church, we're not reaching out to God in prayer for other people. We're not reaching out like we should to the lost and dying world. Peter and John were out here doing the work of God, as we should be today, as all of us should be. If you're sitting home and you're watching this video, you may not take a lot of heed right now to what I say. But let me tell you, if you get in that prayer closet and you start praying, God's going to put it in your heart that you need to be busy. Busy about his work. Let me tell you something. We need to get up off the pews and up off the couches, turn the TV off, get the Bible and start reading more, going out and meeting and greeting people and inviting them to our churches. That's exactly what the disciples were doing. Spreading the good news of Jesus. Well, this lame man, the Bible tells us as he was leaping and walking and praising God that many people saw him. And they were all in wonder and amazement. Hey, this is the man who said it the gate, begging. So they all came rushing over on Solomon's porch, the Bible said, to see what had happened. But Peter, being the man he was, he saw what was going on. They were coming over there thinking he and John had done something miraculous. But he explained it right then. He stopped that foolishness and told them it's nothing of us. It's through the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you, as Jewish people, sent to be crucified. Pilate was willing to turn him free, to set him free and not send him to death. But you chose a thief and a killer over him. You sent him to that cross. But let me tell you something today. It was preordained at the beginning of time that Jesus Christ would bear our sins. He would go to that cross at Calvary for us. Just as this lame man was healed so that people might see it and they might believe just as he was healed. The same has happened for us. This very same thing. Jesus Christ still is alive today and well. Sitting at the right hand of God waiting to make intersections for us. This lame man doesn't say what happened to him after that. But it did tell us quite clearly that he was leaping and praising God just as we should be today when our needs are met by Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So many times he's came and pulled me out of the messes I've made and I've gotten into in life. So many times he's come to me in that still dark hour ready to take charge of my situation. Well, let me tell you, church, today, he's ready to take care of what's happening in your life. If you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'm going to tell you there's no better time. There's no better invitation that you could have to come today to know him. You know, I could stand here and talk to you all day about the things that Christ has done in this Bible that tells us about all the many miracles, all the many things that he's performed. But you know, you have to witness it for yourself to understand. Let me tell you today, if you're watching this video and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, let me give you this invitation to come to know him. Let me give you this opportunity that you might kneel and right now and pray. I'm going to ask you if, you, if you're watching this and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I'd like to just ask you right now that you would take this opportunity just to kneel. I can't pray for you. I can't get you into heaven, but I can pray with you. I can tell you all it is is a simple little prayer, and it's so simple a child can understand it. All you have to do is ask. Ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart. Believe. Believe in him that he died on that cross. 
And he did what he told you he'd do. He'd take away your sins. And confess. Just tell somebody what he's done for you after he, you've received him. At this time, I'd like for you, if you would, just kneel and pray. And I'm going to pray with you and for you. Father, at this time today, Lord, at the end of this broadcast, I'm just coming to you, God, asking, just as Peter and John, that you'll just send that Holy Spirit, Father, to those today who are knelt in prayer, God, that need you in their lives, that have problems, that need healings. God, I cry out to you today. I ask you, Father, that the sins will be forgiven. The lame will be healed. Father, I pray this morning, and we know there's so many sick and needy in our world today. I pray, Father, for that just healing power to be sent here on earth to us who are willing to stand to be disciples for you. Father, I pray that you just anoint us afresh and anew and just receive these, Lord, that don't know you today. Father, I thank you and I praise you for every opportunity to pray and to stand. Because it's in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we do ask you. Amen. Amen. I thank you for watching this video, and I just hope there's something that was said that pricked your heart that you might want to know Jesus. Or if you know Jesus, that you might want to go deeper and deeper into his word and his service. Today, just take it forth and be like Peter and John. Be willing to go with the word, and I thank you for this opportunity. In Jesus' name, we thank you and praise you.